Hi everyone, it's Rachel um, with Rachel Super Cute Creation, and I am here to do just a quick little project. Um, last night I did a craft with me, and I needed to do some prizes to send out to those people who were watching with me. So um, I ended up doing eight prizes, and I wanted to kind of stick with the theme that um, of making collage tags. So I made these cute little scrap sampler books and we're going to make one on camera today. Um, this is inspired by Nick the Booksmith and she created this amazing printable um, for free called Scrap Sampler Book Labels by Nick the Booksmith. I will link her below. Um, so she does a larger book and I decided I wanted to do smaller books. These are about three and a half by five. Um, and so I took her labels and I ended up printing them PDF two to a page. So that's how we ended up with this. Um, and it made, they're just perfect for these um, little scrapbooks. And so I then went ahead and embellished them. Um, because these embellishments will be, everything in here will be used. Um, we're going to open one up just so you can see, and then we're going to get started. So, kinda, so this is the little package that each of my people will be getting. Um, and it starts with the scrap sampler book. It has an embellishment on it. The great thing about this is you can actually peel it off or you can tear it with this manila folder behind it um, and use that um, cluster on something. Um, here's one of the little mini tags that we made online last night during our live video. And then when you open it up, here are some hole reinforcers for your tags that you're gonna make. And then these little scrapbooks, These little scrapbooks also have this cute little pocket. And in the pocket, I put one of my, and this is all just scraps out of my bin. That was a piece. They have um, some postage and this cute little pocket that I made um, with, oops, sorry, I'm out of frame here, with this little journaling card that goes in the back. So just a little bit of ephemera. And then this each one has a little card from the Smithsonian Institute. So that goes in a pocket. Um, and then basically these are just little collage books of papers that I have that many people may not have. Um, the cool thing about sharing is, is not all of us have the same papers. And so I'm just giving a little bit of each paper and some fabric that can be used for collaging tags. So that's sort of the premises of this book. All right. Then I included these two tags that I had left over from Christmas last year. Um, every time you shop at Bath and Body Works, you can get um, tags, ribbon, and packaging. And so I do that for every item that I have because I all Christmas long, I, I need tags and things. Um, but these were left over from last year, and they're the perfect size, and they can be collaged over, and they're nice and sturdy. So I included two of these to upcycle into a project. I included one of my tags, my collage tags. And then I included a piece of foreign book page so that they can be covered. So these are the little kits that are going to be going out to um, my friends that, that stuck with me last night. We had some buffering and some issues with YouTube. And the thing, the reason why I did them eight and a half, I'm sorry, not eight and a half, three um, and a half by five is because they'll fit in a regular envelope and the postage will be reasonable. So this is something that you can send internationally. It's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. You can send it to friends and, you know, Christmas is coming up. So if you want to just send something to those online friends that you or your mail, happy mail people, 
um, this is a great way to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and seal this one down. And then all I did is just get an envelope and put a stamp in the corner and we're going to address these out. So this is what I'm sending. But I wanted to make one with you and show you um, how I did it. They're really quick and easy. I made eight of them up last night in a little over an hour. So I'm just using this is an old um, old file folder. Look, it even has a sticky note still in it. So um, Nick made hers big. She made them like five by, um, I don't know. I don't even know. She just kind of made them to fit her biggest piece of scrap that she had. So hers were around this size right here. And that's great. And I like that size if I was going to keep it at, at home or, but to mail it is tough and it's going to, it's going to be expensive. Um, to mail and because I had to mail eight of them out um, I didn't want to spend a fortune at the post office so that's why I said okay if you're making tags you don't need a ton of scraps and so I cut mine um, three and a half by five so basically it's the size of an index card and that's just a perfect piece to keep on your desk okay um, keep these because these are great for clusters so once I did that, um, the next thing is to just get a pile of scraps. You know, my goal is to just get these scraps used up because I have too many scraps. So I just grabbed some scraps out of my scrap bin randomly. And now what I do is I just start building. And so um, you want them roughly the right size and I'll show you, we'll trim them all up later. Um, and you're just giving them pieces. Here is wallpaper. So I'm just ripping some wallpaper about in the right size. And we'll we'll trim anything we need to. Look at this is so cute. I got this at a um, vintage sale. Now, if you don't want to rip it up, like I want to give most of this away to the person who's going to get this because um, I think it's unique. All you have to do is fold up the page so that it fits pretty much in here. Look at it. It's pretty close. All I'm going to have to do is, is tear the edge a little bit and it'll fit in there. So I'm more carefully tearing this one because I want to keep as much of the little blue music page as I can. And look, now it fits perfect in there. So that, that works. And so some of them you want to be more careful with. Here's some um, cut off from some foreign book page that I had some of my collage materials. This is very, very old. This is a vintage um, puzzle. I don't even know. Like, a. let me see. Let me put it all together. It's so old that it started falling apart. Oh, it's a um, entry from 1955. There was an entry for this puzzle. Sorry, I'm not sure why my camera keeps auto focusing. So I want to give the person some of this. And basically, I try to pick things that I don't think that they'll have. You know, I'm not putting um, notebook paper in here because pretty much everybody has notebook paper. So I don't need to put that in there. I'm putting things that I think maybe um, the person might not have so that they can just add to their stash, but it's not going to take up a ton of room. Um, so if you do jelly prints or you do, you know, mixed media, those are things that are one of a kind that people are not going to have. Um, I do try to put some scrapbook paper scraps in there. And I just keep stacking. I love to put printables. This printable is from um, Calico Collage. Now, you do need your top. I needed to be a little care more careful. You do need your top to be pretty square because that's where, where we're going to bind it. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. So just keeping that there. Um, I'll put some tea stained paper in there. Most people have that, but some people don't. And I think lastly, oh, one thing I want to, I want to share this vintage handwriting paper that I picked up this week. And I do want to share a piece of music paper. 
So this is very old music paper. This is 1901 music paper. You can see it tears very easily, but it's excellent for collage. It's not good for pages in a journal by itself, but it is wonderful for collage. So, and I try to get about 15 pages in here, um, give or take. So I'm going to just see where are we at. I'm going to set that to the side. So we have, we have one. This one's got to be folded. Two. Three. And I'm just burying them. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. We're close. See what else we have here. Fourteen. Fifteen. Okay. And let's add one of these little bird birds in here because I know people like birds. Actually, we'll add them both in there. So we're a little over 15, but that's okay. All right. So the next thing that I try to do, oh, darn it. I didn't add any fabric. I like to add a piece of fabric. See what I have here in my scraps. Just a second. I like to add a piece of fabric because not everybody has fabric. Um, and some people are afraid to use it, but hey, if you have a scrap, you can use it. So this is a gorgeous piece of scrap that I have left from um, my boho kits. So I'm going to just put your scissors and I'm going to include a piece of this. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So now you can include real small pieces. If you wanted to include a small piece like this, there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't have to be wide pieces. It can be little pieces. One of the things that Nick had that I really, really want, do you know that old Hey, everyone, I see a couple of you are in here. If you'll pop over to the right and say hello so I know who's in here, I'd appreciate it. We're making some scrap packs today. Um, one of the things that Nick has, if you um, remember back in the day when um, we had printer paper that was all together and it had those little holes on the side, she rips off that edging and she leaves, puts that on there because she said, you know, a lot of people don't have those. And, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. That is something I don't have. So, okay. So the next thing you do is you just want to get all of these papers nice and even on the top. And you want to center them in your book. Now, you can see here, we're a little over the edge. I don't mind if the fabric sticks out a little bit, but what I don't want is the papers to stick out. So what I do is then I just hold the edge and I just rip these. Now, you can cut them with scissors, but because these are collage books, I just rip the edges. Now, I will, in this case, just for time's sake, Cut the edges. But you don't have to. You can just completely. So we're just trimming it up. Just going to kind of tuck that fabric in. There we go. Okay. So we now have it all trimmed up and it's ready to be bound. Mm -hmm. 
So the next thing you have to do is you have to make sure, it doesn't really matter down here, but you have to make sure all of these papers are bound. Now, what I forgot to tell you is when you use a file folder, the width of your spine is only going to be one of these folds on a file folder. You don't have to use a file folder. You could use cardstock or something else. Um, but this is about an eighth of an inch. So, or a quarter of an inch. Let's see. Let's see if I can measure it. It's about an eighth of an inch. <coughs> so the next thing that I do, excuse me, I didn't mean to cough. A little bit of a sinus is going on this morning. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm getting this to the top. I take and put a binder clip on the bottom. Just like that. And then we're going to bind this. So the book that I showed you actually was bound backwards. So I have to take those pages out and bind them correctly before I send that out. I didn't realize that. So I'm glad that was the one that I opened. All right. So you want to bind on this line right here. And I bind close because... Um, that way the person can use as much of those scraps as possible in their collage. So you go about an inch. I go about three quarters of an inch. Um, Nick goes an inch, but I go about three quarters of an inch. And you're going to use your awl and just put a hole. And you're going to do it on the other side. And then you're going to go as best as you can directly in the middle. Now, because this is a scrap pack book, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then you're going to get some twine. And let's see here. Of course, I can't find my twine this morning. Oh, we'll use the spread twine. And you want about three links, just like you would in a normal binding. Get out your needle and thread your needle. Well, of course, it's going to have a little curl on the end this morning. Hi, for those of you who are joining, thanks for joining. Um, go ahead and go over to the right hand side and um, leave a comment so I know who's here. We're just making some scrap packs. Actually, I should leave one out so as people are coming in, they can see what it is we're making. So we're making these scrap packs that are inspired by Nick the Booksmith. All right. So to bind this, it's real simple. You hold it here. You go down the middle hole. Leave yourself a tail. Go up either the right or the left. It does not matter which one you're going through. And I'm going to have some problems because I, when I was talking, I moved the holes. I felt them move. Sorry about that. Okay. Now you're going to go all the way across to that hole. Pull it through. And then go up through the middle hole. Again. And you want to be on the other side of this. So you want one thread on one side and one thread on the other. Once you do that, you're going to just tighten and draw and, and make a bow. Now, she did not do a bow on hers. She actually just tied them and made little knots. Um, and I decided, no, I thought I wanted a bow. So. So you just tighten it, and I just put it in a knot, just like that, and a knot again, because I don't want it to come apart, and then I just tie a regular bow, just like that. All right, now we have this adorable little scrapbook that can be used for collaging. Now, see, we missed a couple of pages because they were not at the top like they should be. 
they weren't um, straight. One of Nick's tips is this. Nick says, if you missed it, all you need to do is take a little bit of glue. She said, not much. And put a couple of dots on here. And she says you glue it to the page in front, push it up in there. And she said that way it'll be just like it's bound and they can pull it out of there. And so we're going to do the same. Oops. we do the same with this one. And that's why it's important to keep the top as, as straight as you can so that it will all bind together. Um, but, you know, it's fine if it doesn't. These are just scrapbooks, and as people start pulling things out of them, as our our junk journal and mixed media friends start pulling things out of them, they're going to start falling apart, but that's okay. All right, so we now have our book. The next thing that I do is I go over to my little tags that I made, And I add one. So we and we made these little mixed media tags yesterday. So these can be taken off and used in a project. So I just take my little bulb pin, hook it through on the thread. And there we go. Then I open up the front cover of my book. And I want to give my friend or whoever I'm giving this to some of these little holes that they can use to reinforce their tags. So I take that, I use just a little bit of um, tape, adhesive tape. You can use whatever you want. You could use glue, you could use a little bit of hot glue. It doesn't really matter for me. It's just easy to grab this tape. So, and then I just tape that up in the upper edge. Now you could do. You could do some washi tape strips here. Um, you could add some more embellishments if you wanted. There's lots of things you can do. So then after that, I open up the back and fold it down. And I grab another piece of my scraps. And I create a little pocket. So let's see what we have here. I'm going to use this. So the pockets that I have been creating are about um, two and three quarters. By it doesn't really matter how tall. Because I've been using book pages, I've tried to use the image. So I try to make it work however it is. And then I just glue that little pocket in there because once again, this pocket can be taken off and used in a junk journal. The goal of these scrapbooks is, is that you can use every bit of this. Because you absolutely could take, I'll show you in just a second when I'm, You absolutely could cut this across and you now have a journaling card. So here's my little pocket. Whoops, I didn't mean to move it. Here's my pocket. And in my pocket is where I put that additional pocket that I made. You don't have to do this step. Nick didn't do this step. Um, but I just thought, hey, let's put as much stuff in there as we can so that the person who gets this can use it. All right, hopefully everybody's still with me. So now the last thing there is to do is to decorate the front. And so I just went over to Nick's. I'm going to cut one of these. It doesn't matter which one you cut. And I even used the scrap sampler book. I even cut this out. Even though she didn't make that as part of her printable for this, it was just her title. Um, I used it anyway because... I love the type, the font, and it's just fun. Now, you could print these out on sticker paper, um, which is, I believe, Nick prints hers out on sticker paper. For me, there was too much space. I just didn't want to lose 
all that sticker paper. Um, sticker paper is expensive, so. But you could do that if you wanted to. All right, so now I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm going to just glue the back of this. And I'm going to add this cute little shipping label to the corner. And Nick pretty much left hers like this. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. She didn't have the tag or anything. She just left it. But I added the tag. And then I went in and I said, you know what? I need something on the front because I want every bit of this to be used. So I went into my, um, my little scrap bin. And I pulled out one of my tidbits. And so um, I want one a little bit bigger than that. Let's see here, what do I have? Well, let's use this one. There we go. So then I'm just gonna add some glue to the back of this. And the great thing about these tidbits is um, this can be torn off the front of here, leaving some of the manila folder, which is great and it can be moved on to another project. And it's a pretty flat project. It doesn't take, it's not very bulky. Um, so there we go. Let's get this down just a little bit. So here is our little scrapbook that we can send to a friend. Now, let me show you what else I added, okay? So. Oh, well, that's trying. Okay, so I added these two, like I said, the two tags. Flip it over. Put the two tags there. Now, if you don't have tags like this, you can make some up for them. I added a piece of um, foreign book page. And then I tried to add one of my tags so that they would get something um, from me and would understand you know, what it is that we were making. So I need to go grab one of my tags that I had left. Let's see here. Well, What can I do with those tags? Okay, they are. Here they are. Okay, so I want to add one of these tags. These tags are kind of long, so I just trim them up. Ink to the bottom. Add in my tag to the back. These little cellophane bags are four by six, so they fit these perfectly. So then you just put them in your little cellophane, cellophane excuse me, cellophane bag. And what a great piece of happy mail. Even if you're not a junk journaler or you don't like to do mixed media, for those people who like to do happy mail and do some decorations on the outside of envelopes, um, if you're into Instagram, that's really big right now. Good morning, Kathleen. Thank you for joining. Just making some little um, scraps, scrap samplers, excuse me, for um, gift ideas. So there you go. It's it's done. It's cute. It just slips in a regular envelope, um, regular size envelope, just like that. And you can mail it. It didn't take a lot of time. Um, it's about a dollar, depending on how much you put in there. They're about a dollar to ship. Um, if you don't put as much weight in there, um, it'll be a little lighter. These envelopes right here, Kathleen. Oh, <laughs> that's a funny story. Um, I have a whole bunch of these envelopes because 
I went to a estate sale and they had tons of them. Now, um, you it, and so I bought just the entire thing of envelopes, but I have bought them from Walmart carries them very reasonably. And if you check your local craft stores, they um, carry them very reasonably as well. Oh, Kathleen, I'm going to make a bigger one. So if you want to hang in there, I'm going to do one more real quick. Um, we made these little small ones, but I'm going to do a big one right now because I'm going to keep this one on my desk. Um, and so if it, it's up to you. But if you want to hang around, I'm going to make one more just so people get the idea. All right. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to make one more. Um, and so this is a, about the size that Nick did. So if you have a bunch of scraps that are just driving you nuts, then do this and bind them together so that they're all in one nice little booklet. And you can leave this booklet on your desk. That's the thing um, that I like about the little project that she came up with because it can stay on your desk and nobody really knows what it is. It just looks like a little bound book. So what I'm doing, again, for those of you who are just coming in um, is I am making these little scrap sampler books and in them are scraps for collaging and I am just using all of the junk that has been hanging around for a while so like this piece right here um, I'm going to use this piece in mine remember I said um, Nick said you know use any even odd pieces we're going to use this odd piece but I am going to cut this straight because I do need to make sure that I get it bound in my book. I'm going to put it towards the center. I need to either put it towards the side or the center where I know I'm going to get it bound in there. Okay. Um, I'm going to add this piece of, let's see. I really have a mess on my desk. So we're going to use this piece too. Here's a piece of scrapbook paper. Adding that. Um, we get a piece of my mixed media paper. So it can get used up. I don't know about you, you all, but sometimes I make things and I just do them just to get that creativity and that energy out. And then I put them away <laughs> and I forget about them. And then it's a year or two later before I realize, hey, I forgot I did that. That's why it's important to dig out those scrap bins. All I've been working with is the scrap bin stuff. Nothing has come out of anything else. Um, I showed you all last night, you know, here's my scrap bin. It's just a mess. And no one wants to dig into a mess all the time. So if you put them in these cute little books, then you're more likely to use them. Here is a, a misprint of a printable kit from Calico Collage, and it looks beautiful, but this butterfly should have had um, some black in it, and it was more defined, but this is perfect for collaging. And so I had to put a new black cartridge in and Oh, you've seen some napkins like the one that's in my, um, this one right here. Yeah, I think I got it from, I can't remember. I want to say maybe from um, Tuesday mornings. I don't have a Tuesday mornings close to me, which is such a bummer. I'm sure my husband's happy about that, but um, I don't have a Tuesday morning by me. <laughs> so I have to go two and a half hours away. And when I go, it is bad news. So there I go. I'm adding some more collage paper in here. Um, look at, I have this book page. This book page is just about the right size. I'm going to add that book page in there. Perfect. Let's see what else I have in this bin. Um, if you all use some, if you all use sprays, um, I keep all of my spray over pages. And these are wonderful for collaging. So I'm going to just take a piece of this because this one, 
And I know how long ago this was. This went to my friend Naomi. And the reason why I know is because there's all these circles on there. I did a graffiti um, loaded envelope for her. And so I'm thinking it was well over a year ago when I did that for her. And sent it to her in Australia. So it's time to get this baby out and use that. All right. So as I said earlier, I'd like to get about 15 pages in here because um, I think that's important. These are my strips from um, um, security envelopes. So I'm going to add some of my longer strips of security envelopes in there because that way I'll be more apt to use those. And let's see what else I have. Let's see, we have one, two, so I count these as one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I like to do around 15. Um, don't ask me why. Um, I think it's because I like to have that variety. So if I'm going to do a challenge with myself, Guys, these can be used if you have just a little bit of time and you just want to mess around with something. This is a great way. You have 15 papers in here to make some things with. And so um, if you just pull that out and pull a tag out, you're not making a huge mess in your craft room and you, you have a lot to, to work with. Um, I'm now just, this is my other scrap bin. I'm now just grabbing scraps out of here. So what a fun way to do a challenge. I don't know. I, I still work. I know some of you are lucky enough that you're retired and I'm not yet, but I will be soon. A few more years. And so I don't have a lot of time, but I have to do something creative. If I don't, um, I will lose my mind. So so this is a lot of times I come home and I'm exhausted and I don't want to like, oh, I don't want to make the mess in my craft room and I go on and on and on. But the reality is this is something I can just pull out and I can pull out some glue and just do some collaging. So um, and this piece, I think, will be just about perfect, too. All right. So there's one more piece that I want to add and then I think we'll be pretty close to our numbers of things that um I had got this from a vintage or from a a flea market it's some handwriting in pencil and so I'm gonna add that so let's count again real quick one two three four five six I'm gonna count these two together as seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so we're pretty close. So now what I typically do is I just try to arrange them. Um, <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason to this either, but um, I, I try to keep the little bit smaller pieces if I can on top. Um, and let's see here. And then I just try to get a variety I'm gonna move these move these up here okay all right oops so the next thing you do is you want to make sure that all of these pieces flip this over all of these pieces are nice and tight at the top because we're going to bind this together. Okay, so I am putting this like this, keeping it nice and tight. Okay, and then if I can find my binder clip, we'll grab it. Oh, here it is, right here. Then I just put a binder clip on it, just like that. Hi, Maria from Florida. Hello from, um, it looks like Marieville from Canada. Good morning, everyone. 
We're just making some of these little scrap sampler, scrap samplers. Goodness, goodness gracious, I can't talk all of a sudden. And we made some mini ones that can be sent out in the mail. But now I'm making is these were inspired by Nick the Booksmith. Um, and she has a free printable out. So this is her printable. This is what she uses. This was the label she used. I put two together to make them smaller so that I could make these cute little scrapbooks to send out. It's getting to be the holiday time. And um, also, I like to send things, happy mail things to friends um, who I've been friends with online for a while now. And um, last night I did a mixed media tag piece and I said that I would send out a gift to eight of the eight people who stayed with me through the whole hour time. So I went with the smaller ones because they fit perfectly in an envelope. So the next thing we're going to do, just like we did on the smaller ones, just making sure these are nice and tight is we're going to bind them. So I'm coming down and I'm going about, she goes three, she goes an inch in. I like to go about three quarters of an inch in to make sure that I'm getting everything. Oops. Okay. And so I am just going to put, oops, put a hole in there. And then I do it again. Does not have to be perfect, ladies. Oh, this one does not want to go through. Must be awful thick right there. Now, if you have a, you can use your crocodile as well. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is just thread my needle. All right, Carolina here. You know what, Aurora, I made the brag book. I, if you want to see a variation that I did as soon as I'm done with this, um, I will show you. If you're interested, I'll show you that. Oops. I have a hard time threading Baker's twine. I don't know about anybody else. I always seem to split the threads. Is there a trick out there, ladies, to keep that there? Other than continuing to lick the thread. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to bind it just like Nick did. Nick goes through the center and she leaves a tail. She goes, it doesn't matter what side you go to, but you got to go to one center. Okay. Go this way and go all the way across. Do not go down the middle. Go all the way across. And then back up through the middle. Oh, that was a ch okay. Now, when you come up through the middle, let's see if I can show you this. You have sides. So you have one one thread on one side, one thread on the other. Okay. Take your needle out. I have to put my needle back, or it gets lost on my desk. Take your needle out. I just make a knot. There we go. I put a bow. And it's done. Now, if you don't want these pages sticking out the bottom, all you have to do is just rip them. Just rip them so that they're not hanging out the bottom. If it doesn't bother you to hang out the bottom, leave them. It's not a big deal. All right. Okay. So Nick then just takes and cut her, her little sheets, her little labels, and makes a scrap sampler um, book. So, um, you know, I liked them smaller because I was doing the small books, but I'm going to cut one of Nick's labels out right now and we'll add it here. And then I'll show you my final twist. That 
Oh, Maria, you haven't seen these? These are amazing. Go over to Nick's website and check these out so that you will actually use them. And I, I want to do maybe a challenge where we do a scrap, scrap sampler book challenge where we challenge ourselves to, um, you know, once a week or whatever to get out our scrap sampler book, either embellishments or, all right. I'm going to put this kind of kitty wonky. Okay. So there's the sampler book. Now, my twist that I do, I add one mix so that it can be used on a project at some point. These are my little mixed media tags. So that one. And because, oops, there we go. So I've got my tag added. Um, then I like to add one of my collages, which can also be used later. So I'm going to use this one. And I put just a little bit of glue on here so it can be or you can rip it off and use your manila folder behind it. So let's see, how do I want that? We're going to do it just like this. And then the other tip, the other thing that I, I open this up. Oops. Open this up. And because the mine that I leave on my desk, I'm going to put a, a full sheet on there. Whole reinforcers. And I'm going to get my ink out. I showed you guys this the other night, but I'm going to show you again. Um, let me get a scrap piece here. Get this all over my table. All right. So I take my whole reinforcers. And then I go a little darker or a little less dark, a little lighter, I guess is the correct term. And then to do the lightest. And that way I have a, oops, I have a variety of colors to use on my, to read. Just like that. You can do this with any color. Um, you can do this with, with um, colored inks or anything like that. Um, the next thing I do is I get out my tape. Oh, now my fingers aren't working. And I just put adhesive tape on the edge of this. Now remember, on my small ones, I only did three holes. Because, no, I did four, I think. I did four. So there. So now I have my holes right there where I need them for when I'm working. Then I built, which which Nick did not do this. Then I went to the back and I built a pocket using my scraps. So we're going to use this. Let's build a different pocket this time. Okay. So I'm just going to freehand a pocket. Whoops. Look at that. So we're going to build a pocket. I have to do this, but I like to ink. And because the whole purpose of this is able to use reuse this pocket, it's already inked up for you. 
The goal is, is that you use every bit of this brag book. Oh, that's a great idea, Marieville, Mar Marieville 55. Um, she said she's already made up some of these books and said she's going to try the mini ones with Christmas papers. I don't have a lot of Christmas papers, but that would be great. Love to receive something with Christmas papers in it. Um, and, and Christmas embellishments. What a great idea. Love that idea. And what a great idea for every holiday. Halloween's coming up. I don't, I don't have a lot of Halloween papers either. Um, actually, I don't have any, I don't think. But what a great idea. So there. So now I've added this pocket. And now I can add any type of embellishments that I want. So let me go grab some things in the back real quick. So here's the embellishment bin that I've been kind of working on. Oops, I'll show you. I'll let you see. So these are some things that I've printed out recently, some postcards, and they're smaller, so they could go on tags. So I'm going to stick a few of those in there. Oop. And let's see. This would be great. It's like a ledger paper that I could cut just a little off and use. Let's see if I can get it to fit in there. Well done here. Okay, got some glue. There we go. So we'll stick that in there. We'll stick in a couple of these postcards that I printed. And let's see. Let's stick one more thing. I'm gonna stick these little there. So now we have this little book like Nick had. Let me just clear off my table here. What a mess. So now in my craft room, Okay, I can leave this on my desk. And if I want to create, all I have to do is get something to create with. So I can get some tags um, or just a piece to grab some. So the other thing I do a lot of is just cutting tags and leaving them. So I could just leave some tags on the desk. Like this, or I could leave these plain ones. Let's do these plain ones. I could even tuck those in the bag. And tuck these in the bag. And we can play. So tuck them in there. And let's use it real quick. Let me show you how to use it. So, oh, I just grabbed one of the tags off the back. We're going to do something with it. I'm opening this up. All I need now is a hole punch. Oh, I can craft now. So I'm going to start by punching a hole. Going to peel off one of these stickers and reinforce my hole. And now I can just start playing. I can just start looking through these papers. What do I want to do? I'm going to take a little piece of this and I'm going to add it. And the cool thing about this one is, is I can add either side. So look, I can add this side. And then it has writing on the back, so I can add this side. So I actually get all the use out of this. 
just going to start layering. Just going to layer and play and create. Oops. Tag. And it's just a great way to relax. Oh, you are welcome. Oh, Reville, thank you. I would I would love if you would send me a, a gift and I will definitely um share it online when I do my my videos. I would love to get something from me. Um I love to get stuff from my viewers and share it. So thank you so much. I will definitely send you my address. And then we're just collaging. We're just Actually, I probably should have waited a minute. I'm going to peel this off for just a second. Ah, because I'm going to have to collage over this hole. I don't really like this paper, but it's a good base paper. So we'll collage up in here too. I don't want to waste any of this vintage handwriting paper. So... All right, so we're just collaging away. So I hope this video, um, it's nothing mind blowing or, you know, anybody can do this. It's not difficult, but it's just another way for you to get your stuff out and use it. Um, sometimes I get overwhelmed with the. And so, yep, you just go in here, you just start building. So, and look, I hardly used and made this tag. Hardly used any of the papers. Oops, it's a little too much. All right. So that cute little book, we just in about, I don't know, less than a minute, just made this tag really easy simple pull reinforcer back on there take my scissors trim off the excess and now I have this collage tag ready to go and you want on it after that I mean you can start I like to ink them up if you only have a little bit of time in your craft room to craft this is a great way, or if you just went in front of the TV. So one of the things that I do Sunday nights are my, I, my husband likes to watch football or hockey, basketball, whatever the sport is that's on. And um, sometimes the only time I have with him is that time in front of the TV, but I am not a big TV watcher and I'm sure they don't always love to watch sports. So I can take this little booklet some tags, a glue stick, a pair of scissors, and a hole punch, and that's it. Oops, sorry. I hope you like this. I hope this is um I hope this is you. you. I'm not sure why it's out of focus. Thank you, Kathleen. I'm not sure what the focus issue is. Um I apologize. YouTube has been causing all kinds of havoc lately. Then you can take a collage piece if you want. Um, a cluster, and you can add it. One of your smaller pieces, you can add it. It doesn't really match. Let's get something that matches. And this is another way to make these collage pieces. Is you can sit in front of the TV with a stapler and some of your collage pieces, and just make collage. Here we go. Look at. I can add that, and we now have. An amazing tag embellishment. So I hope you like it. I hope uh, it was useful. And I hope everybody has a great day. Um, and I hope you enjoy these little mini books. I hope you make a few of these. And if you do, um, please send me an email. And um, let me know that 
you know, you've made them. I love to see pictures. I love to see comments of my fans out there. If you know, please give me a thumbs up and have a fantastic day, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.